guys, thank you for joining STEAM Urban for our Let's Talk Sit Down. Today's topic will cover colorism and hair discrimination. We have two of our radical educators, Brittany and Emily. Let's talk. All right, so um, basically I wanted to talk to you about colorism and hair discrimination. So first we're going to get into colorism. Um, can you guys define what colorism means to you or wh what your understanding of it is? To me, colorism means discrimination against your skin of color. Um, I agree. I feel like colorism has a lot to do with um, discrimination. So according to the Oxford Dictionary, colorism is a prejudice or discrimination against individuals with dark skin tone typically among people of the same ethnic race or racial group. So if you're black and then within the black community, there's colorism. Do you believe colorism exists in our community? Yes, I feel like it exists a lot. A lot of black people and a lot of communities go through that still today and I feel like that happened from like years and it hasn't like stopped. And that's something that we have to protest for still now today. I definitely agree. I definitely have seen that in my school, actually, and it's crazy because my school is not a predominantly white school, but I still see it with even teachers. And can you elaborate on that? What did you see that your teachers did or maybe your peers actually did? Like, you guys could give us some examples. Um, one experience I have is I remember my teacher like it's like it did a lot with favoritism like i feel like they favoritize kids certain kids that are not black mm -hmm. sometimes and i notice they pick up on it i don't feel like a lot of students pick up on it so as you said that's it has been a topic for a very long time that sometimes people of lighter skin get better treatment because of their lighter skin compared to their peers for darker skin. So you can see that between maybe the Hispanic community. Like you'll always see the face of like the Hispanic community is someone with fairer skin, but in actuality, there are people of all different colors and skin tone in the Hispanic community. And I was wondering, has that affected you guys? Being that colorism is about darker skin, your darker skin, have you ever felt that maybe you were affected by a situation because of the color of your skin? Yes, um, I went to a Catholic school. It had a lot of Hispanics and black people. You could just tell from like the cafeteria, it was like very divided. Just Hispanics on this side, black people on that side. It was really no like interaction between both races at all. It's not really like Hispanic and black people like yes. to piggyback off what she said, I remember in eighth grade, I I'm Hispanic myself and I was friends with many black people and in the cafeteria many Hispanics would sit separately and they would give me like weird stares or weird looks and I'll just like what is wrong with them? Like it's very ignorant. They just stare at me because I hang out. I would be more likely friends with black people like and I was like that. It's, it's just ignorant. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. Um, just to give you guys an example of colorism in communities around the world, um, in the Caribbean countries or African countries, a lot of people will bleach their skin in order to have lighter skin so they can basically look closer to like what this idea of like lighter skin is because lighter skin is better because this is what we were taught by the people that colonized us. When we were colonized, white people told us the whiter you were, the better you were. So it became this hate towards people with darker skin that made people from that have darker skin have insecurities about themselves. Do you believe that people benefit from colorism in certain ways? Being that they're lighter, do you believe that they, they get better jobs or maybe in, you know, their love life, it's easier for them to find someone, you know, do you believe yes. they, yeah. I feel like 
that that's true because I see like I don't know I feel like somebody would judge someone based off on their skin complexion rather than asking like what ethnicity are you which that doesn't matter at all but I'm just saying because of their skin complexion being lighter it's more likely right. for them to get more opportunities and I also feel like some black people like black men may go against their race because they might date um, they might date right. a girls or females that are lighter and I just feel like that's very ignorant or a disgrace because their mom might be the same complexion like I am and they're like not wanting to date somebody like my complexion or anything like that. So I feel like that's just weird because you came from somebody that's that complexion but you don't want to but to be with their value. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how are you accepting your mom? Right, right exactly. Emily, do you have anything to add? Um, I just agree with the, with everything that she said. I definitely agree with that. I've seen that a lot, and I feel like some people of color are like afraid to stand up, depending on their relationship with that person. Like they don't want it to go bad instead of standing up for themselves. A lot of people feel like black people have like a title, like black people like ghetto is black people. Like mm -hmm. that's not the case. Right. There so. That's also probably why black men don't want, want. I feel like they have like stereotypes for black women. Yes. And going back to it also, it's all also about education or the thing that you ended up watching while you were a kid. Um, not too long ago, I was watching this video of child, uh, basically a cartoon and they showed that the white woman she was skinny she had a pretty voice she was you know and all the black men were just like batting their eyes at her and when it came to the black woman they portrayed her as like this really big lady and with a dark voice and very ugly big lips so these things are thought throughout our educational process even with something simple as watching tv like cartoons right. so I wanted to segue into how would you react if you witnessed someone being made fun of because of how light skinned they are or how dark skinned they are? Before like I knew my history, I would say that I would probably keep quiet and that's not good. But now that like I grew into like knowing, okay, this is wrong, this is right, I would say something like stick up for them because that's not right and I feel like if more people stick up, like stand up with each other and we stand strong, yeah. strong with each other, like more can happen. I feel like a lot of like people that are quiet, those are the ones that actually have a lot to say. So mm -hmm. they're like holding back. Right, exactly. I feel like unity is a big part of it. Like we should all stand up for each other, not look not just be a bystander and watch it happen and just think to yourself like, Oh, that was really wrong. Like if that was really wrong, then you should go take action and tell others about it to get involved and take action as well. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And it's also about the beauty of the skin. We're all beautiful in every shade that we come in. So it's okay to tell someone that if someone come, like, you know, how kids are in high school, they'll be like, oh, you, you're, you're dark or darky or like they'll, they'll give you names and it hurts. But it's okay to be that person to stand up also and be like, this is not okay because we're all different skin color, but we're still people and, and we still I have feelings. I feel like um, people who may have like a preference when it comes to dating someone, mm -hmm. I don't really feel like that's right because why are you dating off a skin complexion rather than dating off well, based off on how the person is or how their personality is? Like, that's important. Do you think that could be corrected? Like if a child feels this way or like a young teenager feels that they have to date someone based on their skin color, do you think that maybe you as a friend or family or parents can help correct that to make everyone seem that they're just people and you just date off of... Yeah, I yeah. feel like that can be corrected with like the teenager and the kid, but as far as like the parent, um, it's really hard to change someone. Like, it's, I'm not gonna force somebody to change. You have to change on your own because yeah. you're not. You have to do it for yourself. Like, you have to see it for yourself.
So you can't just say, okay, this is wrong, but not knowing what's wrong. Right. You have to actually know what's wrong. Exactly. Oh. Like, a lot of the times, it's not only the parents teaching the kids. Sometimes the kid has to teach the parent because some, like, older people or, like, I don't know, they have a certain preference or they just seen a lot so they have a lot of stereotypes and the kid is now in age and seeing all of this happen makes them come to their senses and understand like that's ignorant that's not something you should do exactly yes I agree. yeah i agree with you guys um that was really a good talk about colorism because it's um an issue that we don't talk a lot about in our community but Having you guys explain it to us, um, it's really great to see your perspective in, at your age compared to other perspective. And also, we're going to segue into something that you guys feel like you guys deal with is your hair. Like, as girls, your hair is basically your crown. So, my question is, um, are you proud of your hair? Yes. Um, I feel like... Um well, before I was, um, I had straight hair, so I never went like I was natural, but I never like found my curls or like did puffs or anything. But sophomore year, that's when I started getting into like like looking at yeah. my natural hair and started to like really understand it. So I haven't been like having straight hair for a very long time. Right, exactly. We both we both actually started that journey together. We were like. Why are we always straightening our hair? We should like take a form into our natural hair. And I started sophomore year, and now my hair is curly. It used to be straight, and I'm very proud of where my hair is at now. It's natural, it's actual natural state, and I love the way it is. Yeah. And I would not let anybody tell me you should wear your hair this certain way because my hair is part of who I am. Yeah, and I feel like um, I feel like the hair is also like hair and society is also a big part of it like some people just feel like straight hair is it all right that's cool but um my next question for you guys were is were you guys always proud of your hair as a kid because i know myself when i was younger i wasn't proud of my hair because i thought that it was nappy and it wasn't you know like you just said the like the standard which is straight hair so it took me a long time to grow up and to learn how to love my hair. Probably back in maybe 2014 when the natural hair movement started. So I was wondering, did you guys feel the same or were you guys maybe not ashamed, but you know, did not feel comfortable with your hair when you were younger? Um, well, I didn't really experience that only because younger my mom would only always straighten my hair it wasn't until I got older that I realized like this is not my real hair like I just felt like that straightening it was just damaging it so I never really experienced um like a little confidence in my hair but for the people that do I feel like you should um love love yourself and love your, love your hair your skin your everything you have anything to add? Um, I feel like, to be honest, when I was younger, I didn't focus on my hair. Oh, <laughs> I was pretty wild, so I wasn't really <laughs> focused on my hair. To be honest, I didn't really. I was just going to the beauty shop, like. Okay. okay. That's good. That's it. So my next question for you guys is: Do you see bias in the natural hair community? In terms of like texture, like having curlier. Um, having curlier curls or like your hair being like 4C I don't know if you guys know with like 4C, mm -hmm. 4B like do you think that there's a bias towards people who have looser curls than people who have kinky curly hair uh, I feel like um, like favoritism I, like I, is yeah, there favoritism I really see that. like sometimes I used to get like intimidated because I'll be like well I feel like my curls should look like that but it's like everybody has their own pattern of curls so there's no oh your curls have to look like this it's just those yeah. are your curls those are your curls everybody has curls so yeah exactly i feel like it's a big bias in um jobs and occupations because like there are many sometimes people put restrictions i think there was a law that was passed for oh, yeah, discrimination yeah. yes new jersey and, and then dove was a big part of it and 
I actually did a program for that. And the first day, I actually didn't wear my hair curly. I did like a slick back bun. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, is my hair going to look a little crazy if I leave it out? Or And then once I got there, they were like, oh, the project is about hair discrimination. And the next day, I was like, oh, I'm wearing my curls. Like, yeah. But it shouldn't take that for me to wear my curls. Like, I feel like people define it to find different things as professional. Like, what is professional hair? I feel like professional hair is just your yeah. hair, me, yeah. the way you want it. Actually, there was a um, search that people were actually saying on Twitter. They were upset that when you do a Google search of um, unprof unprofessional hair, it was hair of African American that popped up. Uh, that's crazy. Yes. So there's this bias in our world that we maybe don't see it as much, but your hair is your natural hair. It should count as professional. Yes, because I don't, your hair doesn't define you. You as a person, you define yourself, you carry yourself as who you carry yourself as. So I feel like um, your hair has nothing to do with you, so you should be able to wear dreads or get braids. Like I used to be in internships at um, different companies and I'll just, just like Emily said, like she'll feel scared to wear her natural hair and I'll just be like, uh, should I wear a puff today? Like, I don't know, like I'll just do a slick back, but it shouldn't. You know, you shouldn't have to hold back or be like, I want to wear a slick back because you feel like that's unprofessional yeah. or whatever they make it to be, right? Um, one more question, you guys. Um, what would you tell the younger generation of kids that are watching this about their hair? Or how should they feel about even colorism? And, like, just to wrap it up, like, you know, what really is important to them and what should they look forward to as older kids? Um, to just have a positive mindset, like block out like all of the negativity because that would really like help you. Like I used to think about like negative thoughts and if you just put that like behind you and just have like a positive mindset, you can really like well, what you think about is what you're going to be. So if you think about positive things, that's what you're going to be. So I feel like you should embrace your curls, embrace your straight hair, because we're not discriminating straight hair. You have straight hair. That's fine. And just, you know, love yourself. Right. I feel like love is a big part of it. Like, love you and love the way you are. You should let, don't let anyone tell you what way the way you should look because God created you so that's the way God made you and that's the way you you should be happy the way you were created so don't let like people like walk out any negative comments you hear from people don't let them get to your head because at the end of the day you are here for yourself for your family and people who love you and someone who loves you is going to let you be yourself and I don't feel like people that tell you to be a certain way I feel like that's a part yeah. of some love loss they're not like they have to love. fully love you and care about you all right guys um this was such a great talk I was so glad to speak to you guys any last words love yourself um, yeah all right this, <laughs> this was Brittany and Emily from Steam Urban thank you thank you guys Woo! Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.